There's a historic community in Alabama called Africatown, USA, and it's located in Plateau. I'm standing on Paper Mill Road, and what you're looking at are backhoes and bulldozers, which are digging up the land, preparing for a pipeline. The people who live in this historic neighborhood and the children who attend school here have endured poor air quality for many years as they are located next to the former paper mill, which is now Kimberly Clark. The state of Alabama awarded $25,000 to this historic community for a garden. They established the garden but the money was sent back and residents of this community want to know where is the money. And now a pipeline is being put in next to their garden. The trees are bulldozed and piled high. Residents say they cannot sleep at night because of the noise from trucks, which run all night long. Mobile County Training School is a national historic school, and the pipeline is being put in, in the playground. <laughs> Members of the Africatown community gather for a protest. Good afternoon. I want to thank you all for coming out here today. I'm Joe Womack, and who we have behind me are members of the Africa Town community and Africa Town stakeholders and members of the MEJAC Committee, Mobile and Environmental Justice Action Committee, a coalition of people, both black and white, that are concerned about what's happening in the Africa Town community and throughout Mobile County. Today we're here to tell the pipeline people in our company to stop it. We want you to stop it. We've had enough. And we want you to stop it. We realize you're playing bully ball and we don't appreciate it. You know, we, the people in Africa Town, we paid our due. We paid our part. I had two uncles that fought in the Korean War. My brother and, I, and myself, we were in the service during the Vietnam era. My brother went to Vietnam, earned two bronze stars and a purple heart. We have a nephew that went to Afghanistan and with that three, three tours and just came home. At this and that, at my last Christmas dinner, we told our family that we've done our part. All right. We serve our country yes. with distinction. In Africa town, we said the same thing. We've done our part. For 50 years, we were here while the pipe and the uh, and ash and stuff was spewed out of international paper and scots for 50 years down on us like snow in the summertime. And we paid our part. Let somebody else do that. We want you to stop it. We don't want this pipeline coming through here. And we definitely don't want it going through the Mobile watershed out of that Big Creek Lake. We want this. We want the. Uh, Water service people to do their job. They have our commission, our permission to continue that fight. We all pay our water bill, which make up their money. They have their job to protect our water. The enemy domain was given to the water company years ago to protect that water. We want them to continue that protection. Don't let them bring those pipes and anything hazardous to the watershed. I run a pay increased rates than to be drinking water filled with chemicals from a spill of uh, petroleum, such as what happened up in West Virginia. We don't want to see that happen here, here to us. We're also here to say that we're going to, not, not only, if you look back here, you'll see those uh, tree area, tree line being cleared away from them, the later pipes, and it's right next to a community garden where the people have been gardening for over 30 years. We don't want that to happen. That should not happen. They, we grow, we, we grow stuff for the, uh, to eat out here in those community gardens. And we don't want them to lay those pipes right next to the food that we're gonna be growing for our people. That shouldn't be happening. 
not long ago, the state gave the uh, the community twenty five thousand dollars to expand, expand and improve those gardens. All of a sudden, the money was sent back for some reason. Did the pipeline people have something to do that? Do with that? I don't know, but that's just a question in the back of my mind. If you look over here, you'll see them right now digging, about to dig on the school campus. That should not be so. Those kids cannot even come out there today and do their PE on a regular basis because of this. With their, if you look, they're tearing down a backstop for baseball that yesterday the kids was practicing on. They can't even practice baseball today. And we, we don't like that. We don't think that's right. And we want them to stop it. And it's a historic school, a national historic school, that they should respect as much as we, we respect it. We also are here to protest against those ads that's been going on out over the airways on the radio, WDLT, talking about how safe and how secure and how everything the pipes are to the people. Part of those ads say that jobs are coming to Mobile for our people. Well, if you look out here right now, they're clearing the way for the pipeline, and they've got about 10 trucks out there, and not one truck has an Alabama tag All on right. it. Not one That's truck. Not. Texas, and Mississippi. Texas, Mississippi, and other places. Yeah. Right. So where are the local jobs? Where are the local jobs? There's a man standing out here making $25 an hour just holding up a stop sign. See this young girl there? She could do that. She could do that. A local job. Where are the local job? That's right. We all can do something like that. The paperwork they submitted say that 40 jobs locally was going to come out of the, the pipeline being play, laid in Africa Town, and 50 jobs were going to come out of the pipeline being laid across Big Creek Lake, but they offer no proof. They, no, identify those jobs. They offer no proof. Show me, as they said in Missouri, show me. They said that the, the pipes would be buried 90 feet deep. Well, if that's the case, how are they going to inspect them? How often are they going to inspect them? How are they not going to know when the pipes are leaking? Not only that, it seems they have those nurseries and those, those aquifers from the nurseries are buried 100 feet deep, so they're going to be right on the aquifers. And if there's a spill, they're going to be watering those nurseries with oil. And we know we don't want that to happen. They said the crew that they're going to bring in the pipeline be more gas for America. Well, it's a known fact that most of the uh, fuel made from those from that crew is going to go overseas. Yeah. Going, to, going to China and elsewhere. Very little is coming back to America. So we don't agree with those statements. We think all those statements are mislead, misleading. But the main thing we want to say here today is that we want Mars to continue that fight. Continue the struggle. We're going to be back down at the Mars uh, Board of Directors meeting Monday. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we're going to encourage them to continue that fight on our behalf because we don't want the pipelines coming through here. We don't want it going through our watershed. We don't want it going through anywhere in Mobile County. We want good, clean, environmentally friendly business here in Mobile. That's what we're all about. And so don't take that away from us. Re let's reject. If you if you look over here at Hall Bayou where they're supposed to put up the storage tank, they are beginning right now to clear. To, uh, if you go over there right now, you'll see where they're clearing the area for the storage tank. For some reason, it hadn't even been approved. And, and I want you to just take notice. They're just tearing down the uh, the backstop. They're continually working. So we want them to stop. And I don't know. Let me go first. Okay. See, Joe. Joe is the cake, and I'm the icing. The icing is what he just told you what's going on, and you see it. But the other thing that should have went on that didn't happen is it's a federal law that says any people that come here with fracking or any uh, chemical detriment to a community that they supposed to have a town hall meeting with that group of people in that area. They haven't done that. They haven't had no meeting with none of us, and that's a federal violation that's against the law. And because we know the all come that don't care because of all the money they got. But we here to say that we are not gonna stop until we get something done about this plane south capital. The people in Canada 
that's sending the oil down here, they say they didn't care where it go, as long as we get it out of Canada. So now it's down here in the United States and right here in our neighborhood. We do ask for the support of the community. We ask for the support of the leadership here in our area, not only on the city level, on the county level, and on the state level. We have elected officials who represent this community of people. As Mr. Womack has said, for more than 50 years, this, this community has su suffered a tremendous injustice. Here, a historical community where the last slave ship was brought into the United States of America. And instead of this being protected as a, a natural habitat and a place that holds a great place in history, it is being destroyed by one industry after the next. We stand here and we watch and we are so disheartened that just where children played yesterday, their field is being demolished. They should be out here now having PE, right. but they're unable to be out here. And the question is, historically, this always happens to minority communities of color. Would this be allowed if it was happening in another part of town? Amen. We don't want these children put at risk. We don't want the seniors and the disabled who live in this community to continue to be put at risk. Enough is enough. And we stand with this community saying, no more. We're not going away. We're going to continue and we won't stop. Thank you. This is a violation of the Environmental Justice Act that President Clinton brought in in 1984, where derogatory businesses come into minority and black neighborhoods and destroy the neighborhood. It is a violation of the Environmental Justice Act, and we don't want it. My question is, would any of these people who's doing this work or behind the work want it in their community? I live in the community, I have, I'm a homeowner in the community, and I am appalled at what they're doing to no, my I community. It's roughly a mass destruction is going on right now. Yeah, in Syria, they, they, they had the chemical weapons over there. We were getting ready to go to war over there. They had the mass weapons, chemical weapons. Well, I have children. And I'm just appalled that our school system, our elected officials, the individuals that had the power to stop this thought that it was okay. Just yesterday, these children were out here practicing, playing, and having PE. And today, what they have, or had, the little that they had, has just been demolished. And I'm very upset about that, because at what point do we not do economic development at the risk of the safety and the livelihood of the people in the community. The industry will never admit and use the term tar sands. They're never going to say that it's tar sands, and, and more importantly, the correct name is bitumen. They will never say that it is that. Um, but based on our work with other environmental justice agencies all along the Gulf Coast, and from across the nation, this is what we do believe will be the eventual purpose for this pipeline, will be for tar sands oil to come through Mobile. And I think it's enough. We don't want any more pipelines. We don't want any tank farms. We don't want any other industrial hazardous facilities brought into this community. Let's look at building the quality of life. You talk about quality of life. What quality of life do these children have? You just torn down their backstop for their baseball field. So what about the quality of life? Let's bring in some jobs that help build. We need parks. We need recreation. We need community activities. We don't need this type of industry in the community.